Good morning, students. I welcome you all to the online session and uh, hope you all must be fit and fine. So, without wasting our time, let's start our topic, which we had been discussing in our previous lecture, that is Civics Chapter 2, Federalism. Well, students, in our previous lecture, we had discussed about the topic, that is, the features of federalism, right? We had also seen what type of um, federal system is being, or what type of government is being followed in Belgium as well as in Sri Lanka. And so today we are here to discuss about the types of federation which comes into existence. In our previous lecture, we had discussed about the definition of federation, right? So today, now we are going to discuss about what exactly are the types of federation. You will see when we talk about the types of federation, uh, the exact ideal federal system is the one which is based on two aspects. First one, that is, it should be based on mutual trust. And the second one is, that is, agreement to live together. These two are the important aspects of federalism. And on these two aspects, the entire or the different types of federation which exist is being formed out. So you will see when we talk about the types of federation, usually we'll come across two types of federation. One is your coming together of federation, another is your holding together federation. So let us see what exactly are these two types of federation. You will see the exact balance of power between the central and the state government it varies from one federation to another. You will see this balance usually uh, like in ancient period of time in historical con context, this federation when it was being formed out, it was being divided into two types. So as I told you these types, let us now discuss about the first one that is called to be as your coming together of federation. When you will see States on their own come together to form a bigger unit, right? So as to regain their sovereignty and identity, right? By pooling, that is by pooling their sovereignty, they come together so that their identity is also maintained and the security is also increased. So such type of federation which is being formed is called to, get, called to be as your coming together of federation. You will see in this type of federation, all the states, they have equal power. And you will also see that central government is also equally powerful. You will come across like the USA, right? Apart from that, you will also come across example like Switzerland, like Australia. All these are the examples of your coming together of federation. Take for example, when we talk about USA, see in the map over here, USA, it comprises of near about 50 states, right? All these states are very small. These are so small that any one uh, bigger unit can easily empower them. So as to maintain their security, all these small states have come together to form a bigger unit, as the name itself suggests, United States of America, right? So you will see such a type of federation. It's called to be as your coming together of federation. Here you will see all these 50 states. They have their own identity, right? Only for security purpose and to have a more powerful unit, they have come together. So such a type of federation is called to be as your coming together of federation. Is it clear? Apart from that, you will also see the next one, which we are going to discuss, that is called to be as holding together of federation. You will see here the country decides to divide its power between the constituent states and the regional government. Here you will see in this type of federation, central government is more powerful. Apart from that, case might also be like different constituent units might have unequal power. Like for example, if we take the case of India. 
here you will see central government is more powerful compared to that of the states some of the states have also been given special provisions right unequal power like initially how it was like the states of jammu and kashmir apart from that you will also see union territories are also there they have got special powers right so such a type of federation which has come into existence that is when they decide to divide its power among its constituent units that is among the central government the state government and the regional government such a type of federation is called to be as your holding together of federation as i told you central government is more powerful with regards to the state and to the regional government apart from that you will see this leads to unequal power right and some units might be uh, having special powers and this is what is called to be as your holding together of federation so these are the two types of federation which we have discussed that is coming together as well as holding together of federation fine now the question over here is what makes india a federal country so now we are going to discuss about the next topic that is what makes india a federal country right so you see children uh, in our previous lectures we had discussed about uh, two countries that is your belgium and sri lanka we had seen that these two countries though being very small had faced a number of problems relating to the past sharing so then what about the country like india such a vast one having so many different different people belonging to different culture different religion so how that particular power sharing is being accommodated in a country like india so you will see that though india being a vast country power sharing is the only solution for all these problems which can lead to peace and harmony in the country so you will see after independence several princely states became the part of the country and india was declared as a union of states right you will see nowhere in the constitution it is being mentioned as a federal state right but still you will see that indian union it is based on the principles of federation if you could recall those seven principles which we had seen right so after partition when the constitution was being framed out you will see that these federal principles was an integral part of that and since then we have been following these principles of federation seven principles which we had discussed in our previous lecture so you see constitution has provided three fold distribution of power right that is there are more than two or more levels of the government the first feature which, which we had discussed in that first feature what we had seen there is a central government there is a state government and there is a local self government right so you see based on this particular principles that is the union government state government and the local self government the subjects which are there it has been divided into three broad categories that is your unionist stateless and the concurrent list so now let us discuss what exactly is there when i talk about union list you see over here on the slide union list contains subjects which is of national importance right so you will see such a type of uh, subjects are being included in your union list you will see subjects like foreign affairs like your defense like your communication all these are of importance for throughout the country so such subjects are included in the union list of our uh, constitution apart from that you will see rules which are being framed out it is being framed only and only by the central government so these subjects are included in the union list because you will see a uniform policy has to be there throughout the country right and so central government is the one which frames uniform policies for all the subjects right and this is the reason why it is included in your central government list that is your union list apart from that you will also see that there are basically 97 subjects which are included in the union list you will see all these subjects 
are strictly in accordance with the central government. It's the central government or the union government alone which can uh, make laws relating to these types of subjects. Right? So this is regarding the union list. Now the second category that is called to be as the state list. Now you will see state list contains all those subjects which is of importance to the state right? or to the local importance. Like for example, you will see trade, commerce, agriculture, irrigation. All these are the subjects which are of importance to the state. And hence, state government has got the right to frame rules and laws relating to these types of subjects. Apart from that, you will also see 47 subjects are included in this particular category of the state list. Now you will see that apart from the union list and the state list, there is a third category that is called to be as concurrent list. You will see when I talk about concurrent list, it includes subjects of common interest. That is which is included both for the center as well as for the state. Such, a type, such type of subjects are included in your concurrent list. You will see the state government as well as the central government. They both frame the laws in accordance with each other. Subjects like you will see education, forest, trade, you, trade unions, marriages. All these are the adoption. All these are the subjects which are included in your concurrent list. Right. Apart from that, you will also see that when we talk about the rules and the regulations, as I told you, both the government can make rules and regulations relating to it, right? So that there is hardly any conflict between each other. And so to avoid these types of conflicts, you will see uh, the rule of the union as well as the state government both prevails. Now, apart from these three subjects, that is your union, state and the concurrent, there is a fourth one that is called to be as your residuary subjects. So when we talk about residuary subjects, you will see residuary subjects includes all those subjects which were which came into existence after the constitution was being framed up, right? So you will see subjects like e-commerce, cryptocurrency, artificial intelligence, space technology, information technology, all these are the subjects which came into existence after the constitution was being framed up. And hence, they come in the category of your residuary subjects. Apart from that, you will see all states in the Indian Union, many a times, uh, they do not have equal power, right? So you see, children, all these subjects are included in your residuary list. Apart from that, you will see it's a union government who can frame or who has got the power to frame rules and regulations relating to these residuary subjects, right? Apart from that, so discussing about all these three lists, you will see that in our country, federation that are formed, that is by holding together, they do not give equal power to all the constituent units. Many a times, you will see central government has more power compared to that of the states. And this is the reason why you will also see that there are certain states which has got special provisions. Right? If we talk about Jammu and Kashmir, initially before the passing of Article 370, Jammu and Kashmir was a special status. Right? You will see they had got a separate constitution. They had the separate constitution of their own. Indian constitution was not applicable in these in this particular state. Apart from that, you will also see Indians who were not the permanent resident of that particular state cannot purchase land or houses in these areas. Apart from that, you will also see, as I have told you, special provisions were being applicable over there. So all these were the um, provisions which were being applicable to Jammu and Kashmir, which made it a special state. Right? Apart from that, you will also see there are also certain states uh, which has got special provisions. If we talk about uh, the states, you will see which has got less resources. Right? which has got large number of tribal people. Apart from that, you will also see that which has got uh, less population. And um, all those such states were being included in your uh, list of special provisions, right? Like the states of Nagaland, your Sikkim, your Arunachal Pradesh, some parts of your Maharashtra like Vidarbha, all these states have got certain special provisions. You will see 
Article 371 onwards, these articles, they mention about the special provision of the states. If you will look into the, deeply into the uh, articles which are being mentioned in the constitution. So this way you will see special uh, provisions have been provided so as to develop these particular region, right? Apart from that, you will also see there are some, uh, some units of the Indian Union which enjoy very little power. Like you will see that these are too small to be included in your Indian Union. And hence you will see these are categorized in terms of your Union territories. So you will see here the rule of the central government is applicable. You will also see that these uh, independent states when it was being formed out, uh, it, these were so small that it could not be uh, merged with any of the existing states and hence you will see like Chandigarh is there, like um, you have got Delhi, like you have got Lakshadweep, like all these are too small and hence they come in the category of your union territories. As I told you, who makes rules? The central government, they has got special powers in ruling the these particular union territories. So this was regarding your next category that is called to be as your union list, right? Uh, sorry, this is called to be as your union territory. Now, let us have a recap. What we had seen, we have seen the union list, the state list, the concurrent list, the special provisions, uh, the residuary subjects and the special provisions being provided to certain states. Apart from that, we had also seen the union territories. Now, see the next category under this particular point, that is the sharing of power between the union uh, government and the state government, you will see uh, it's being specified or being mentioned in the constitution. Why? So that there should not be any, uh, you know, difference of opinion. And if in case there is a difference of opinion, who plays an important role? You will see the judiciary plays an important role in uh, implementing the rules and the regulations or implementing the constitutional provisions and the procedure. And if any dispute is there, the High Court and the Supreme Court is the one which will solve all these problems. You will see uh, many a times the Union government uh, and the state government, they have the power to um, develop a particular resource by levying taxes and that can be done on their own, right? Apart from that, you will also see like if any rules and regulations have to be passed out or any changes has to be made in the provision of the constitution. So in that particular category, it's not alone done by one particular level of the government. Both the level of the government has to be equally responsible. Unless and until it is passed by both the level of the government, no changes can be made. Right? So you see, the parliament on its own cannot change this particular arrangement. As I told you, any change which has to be done, first it has to be passed into the houses of the parliament, that is the Lok Sabha, the Rajya Sabha, and it should be passed by at least two-third majority. Then only you will see such amendments and changes can be made. And then you will see that those, uh, uh, you can say the changes or the amendments which has been made or uh, which has to be ratified by the legislature of at least half of the total states, then only it comes into existence. So this is how you will see that the federal system that India can be called to be as a federal system. So let's have a quick recap when I to told you regarding how India can be a federal state. So don't get uh, mixed up right with how federalism is being practiced in India. These are two separate ones. So when we talk about uh, India being a federal state, you will need to mention about first point union list, second state list, third is the concurrent list, fourth one is your residuary subjects, right? Fifth one is your special provisions given to certain states. You will mention like initially it was Jammu and Kashmir, but now it is not, right? Apart from that, you will be mentioning about your uh, uh, union territories. Then you'll be mentioning about the um, amendments or the changes to be passed in the constitution. And the last one, the role of the judiciary. So all these seven to eight points has to be written. And a very straight direct forward question is there, what makes India a federal country? Uh, most of the time it do comes for five mark questions. So you need to mention all these points, right? So this is what we are going to discuss about in today's lecture. So you see what we had discussed today. We had discussed about the types of federation that is holding together and the coming together of the federation and what makes India a federal country. So the question is, take down the question for the day. That is, explain or differentiate between 
holding together of the federation and coming together of the federation. The next question, what makes India a federal country? One three mark question, this another one five mark question, right? So this is what we are going to discuss in today's lecture. Um, see you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye, take care, stay safe.